Hello friends, Christian here with Brick Life Crisis again, and today we're taking a look at LEGO Architecture Set number 21012. This is another somewhat vintage architecture set, one of the originals. This is the Sydney Opera House. It consists of 270 pieces and is recommended for ages 12 and up. Let's go ahead and build it up and see what we think. If we take a look at the back of the box, we can see uh, some really nice photography of the Sydney Opera House itself, as well as the model down here. There's a little bit about the Opera House itself that opened in 1973. And then Jörn Utzen, which is the architect of the original building, he gives a little bit of information about him, including uh, his uh, years of life. He was born in 1918 and sadly passed away in 2008. Um, but let's go ahead and crack it open and build it up. As is typical with these architecture sets, the instruction manual is a little bit nicer than most LEGO sets. It's bound more like a paperback book, and uh, it's got some really nice glossy artwork, uh, and it's you know, black paper. Uh, as you can see inside, we have a bit of information, text about the uh, Opera House, as well as some really nice photos, a little bit of information about the design, and about the architect. Uh, the architect the architect, incidentally, um, Utzen, he was born actually in uh, Denmark, um, and he entered a competition, one of almost a thousand people that registered. Uh, Jorn Utzen, who is this gentleman here, uh, actually won the competition and his design was chosen. Um, and the building was completed in 1973 um, and uh, is still one of the best known and most well renowned architectural structures in the world, and certainly uh, one that is uh, really associated with Australia. So when people from other parts of the world think of Australia, this building is probably one of the first things that comes to mind. All right, here it is, set number 21012, the Sydney Opera House. As you can see, we have the printed Sydney Opera House tile down here, which is kind of a signature of all of the architecture sets. I always have the name of the uh, the structure. Um, this is a very cool and interesting building. I've never actually been to Australia, so I haven't seen this building in person, but of course I've seen it in photographs and movies and that sort of thing, and it's always intrigued me. Uh, and I think they've done a pretty good job on a relatively small, not even micro, I'd say it's almost nano scale, uh, but they've done a nice job with it, and I, I really like the, the, uh, the overall model. I think they've done a really nice job with these sails or shells, depending on what you want to call them, um, in Lego form in this size. Um, they're not quite accurate as far as shaping goes. Um, these guys are, you know, kind of flat at the ends and they should be uh, far more pointed than they are. But uh, considering the available parts and uh, the scale, I think they've done a pretty good job. Uh, the Sydney Opera House at its tallest point, at about the, uh, the top sail here, uh, is about 220 feet, which is about the size of a 20-story a building, something like that. So it's pretty tall. Here you can see they have the um, kind of uh, trans clear or smoky clear pieces there. That's supposed to represent the uh, windows that uh, adorn the underside of the sails. Get that back on. There we go. So they've done a decent job with that um, along here at the bottom and in between each of the sails they have some windows there and then the uh, the rest of the campus here it's about four and a half acres altogether um, and uh, as you can see there are three main performance spaces uh, there's the main hall which is primarily for symphonies and other concerts um, and much larger productions the actual opera house where they do uh, operas and other uh, you know, Broadway style type performances would be here and then the smaller what you might consider a black box theater but it's still fairly large um, is where they do um, some smaller and experimental productions and then there are a few other performance venues that are much smaller uh, and rehearsal spaces things like that uh, inside but it's a pretty cool uh, structure and it's a place that I would love to visit someday um, I really like the design of this thing not only architecturally, but as a Lego set, um, you'll notice that these um, two main areas are kind of at an angle. 
and they've done kind of an interesting thing there. If I can pull this off, you can see there is one of these uh, turntable plates here. So it attaches down here on that turntable, and so you just turn it slightly, and that's how it works. It just kind of fits in there really nicely. It's not perfect, but pretty darn close. Now I'm not going to be able to get it back in there though. Uh, there we go. So anyway, they've done the same thing just in reverse on this side. It's a really cool design. I like it quite a bit. So this set originally retailed for about $40, now sells for upwards of $100 if you can find one new in a box. The uh, used sets typically go for about $60. Um, it's not, uh, not a great price to part ratio, even at its original retail price. With only 270 pieces, $40 retail is a bit steep. But if you're a fan of the architecture stuff, if you're a fan of the Opera House, uh, if you're just a collector, uh, it might be worthwhile for you. Um, this set originally came out in 2012, and uh, I think it's a pretty good one. Let me know in the comments down below if you've ever been to Australia, if you've visited the Opera House, what you think of this Lego model, and any other thoughts you might have. So thanks so much for watching. This has been Christian with Brick Life Crisis. Again, we appreciate all of your comments and uh, likes and all that support. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave us a like. Any questions or comments, leave those below. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye for now.